Did you know that ADHD brains also look different on MRI scans than neurotypical brains? ADHD brains have a smaller prefrontal cortex, the area at the very front of the frontal lobe. So what is ADHD and does it have anything to do with dyslexia or difficulty with language in general? Hi, it's Dr. M, founder of Liberated Literacy. In the previous episode, I mentioned that the frontal lobe manages expressive language, motor skills, and executive functioning skills like organizing and planning. Well, the prefrontal cortex is that area that houses the executive functioning skills. According to the Center on the Developing Child at Harvard University, executive function is a term that is used to describe a category of skills that enable people to plan ahead and meet goals. It also helps them display self-control, follow multi-step directions even when interrupted, and stay focused despite distractions, among other skills. Executive functioning also includes working memory, thinking flexibly, keeping emotions in check, managing anxiety, and starting tasks, also called self-initiation. Everyone, despite how developed or underdeveloped their prefrontal cortex is, can and has to learn executive function skills. But people with ADHD have a much harder time with this. Both ADHD and dyslexia have several symptoms in common, such as information processing speed challenges. It may take them a little longer to process certain types of information. Working memory deficits may be in common. Um, that's the trouble with memory for short-term use that helps the brain learn new information and store it for later. Um, they may also struggle with naming speed and both ADHD and dyslexic people may struggle with being able to remember a name or symbol quickly enough to do math calculations fluently or read fluently. And this can show up um, in a variety of different ways. However, just because a dyslexic student struggles to focus, prioritize, and finish reading and writing tasks, doesn't necessarily mean they have ADHD. The mere fact that those tasks are so challenging and laborious can cause a dyslexic person to become inattentive and anxious about those tasks. But a dyslexic person with ADHD will have significant struggles focusing, organizing, planning with that working memory, keeping emotions in check, thinking flexibly, managing anxiety and procrastination in a variety of settings, not just when made to do reading tasks. So it is important to remember that it takes the diagnosis of a skilled, knowledgeable clinician who conducts a thorough psychoeducational evaluation, which is also called a neuropsychological assessment, they should interview their client's family members and teachers. Um, they should take the client's history and background into consideration when assessing them to accurately diagnose ADHD and or dyslexia. Online quizzes, uh, parent intuition, no matter how important that is, and armchair diagnoses are not sufficient and can be harmful. So take the information you're learning and your hunches and intuition, and then go find a good clinician if you think a diagnosis is in order. Check out my guide to pursuing an evaluation. It's a compilation of informative articles, websites, and videos that can help you on your journey for your own diagnosis or that of your child. I have more informative content to share with you, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Share this with someone you think may benefit from it. And remember, October is Dyslexia and ADHD Awareness Month, so spread awareness.